In this edition of Killing with Cubase, we're going to talk about track inserts. And bus inserts. FX channel insert. It's inserts. Okay, let's talk about inserts this time. Um, and I've maybe briefly shown some of this, but um, kind of do some overlap on purpose here. Okay, now we're going to stick with my Muppet sounding uh, choir thing. Let's take off any junk I've added there real quick. No compression, no EQ. Let's just work on this first guy. Okay. There I am. Alright, now let's say we wanted to add an equalizer and kind of do something more like um, uh, the uh, distorted megaphone type of sound, sort of. Let's go ahead and grab our Cambridge uh, UAD EQ. And we can use the stock uh, Cubase one, but for now I want to show you how these inserts work. Okay, now it's how I've kind, of, I've kind of gotten ahead of myself here. So let's, step one, we select the track we want to deal with. And you can do that either on this project menu, or you can press F3 for the mixer. And you can see the highlighted track here. We're working on, uh oh, I always forget that button. That one, okay. Um, our track. And so we want to be clicking on the E button. We can do it there, or we can do it over here. Same thing. But uh, we'll just stick with the mixer for now. Okay, now this is, again, our track. You can see it right there. We have up to eight inserts we can select here. And uh, I'm kind of thinking, I've done this video eight times, so I'm kind of trying to forget what all I've told you and what I haven't because I keep screwing this thing up. Um, if we want to add a plugin, we have a little arrow. We can select that, and then we select whatever plugin we want. Well, let's just say we add a delay. Too. Now, I don't normally use delays on inserts. I usually use auxiliary sends for a billion reasons. You can ask me on the forum if you're confused about those. Um, for now, I'm going to disable it. So we have the EQ only. Let's kind of make this a megaphone sound real quick. Okay, normally I distort that too, and that's kind of beyond the scope of this, but I'm just kind of showing you that we affected this one track only. This other track's still fine. Well, maybe not fine, but <laughs> you get the idea. Um, and so that basically we've processed just this one track. Now, if we wanted to add our delay, again, um, I've got it grayed out now, so all I have to do is turn it back on, or activate it, I guess you could say. And, uh, okay, so there's my delay. Click on the E. Now, we have a few different buttons here we can push. We can do, you already showed me, or I've already showed you uh, how I can turn it off. And that's just gone. And if we push that button, it's not using any CPU power at all. It, it's there, but it's it's totally disabled. Now, if we have it like this, we are using CPU power and we'll hear it. And then we have this other button, which is the bypass. And this means that it's still being processed, it's still chewing up CPU power, but we can temporarily or, or permanently uh, just turn the thing off, have signal go around it. And like this, though. So. The advantage of that is we can automate this button. And I don't think we can automate that one, I don't remember. But anyway, I know we can automate this one. So if I have a delay that wants to be on just one word, uh, like, Hey, hey, hey. But um, but no other words. Then what we can do is have it off and then go. You get the idea. So like, I oh, hear the secrets that you keep. That kind of thing. Um, from the romantics. Um, but anyway, um, so that's that's kind of the gist of, of that. So the only time I really turn a plug-in off is when I just changed my mind about it, but I'm not ready to totally just ditch it. Um, it's nice having those settings around sometimes in certain mixes, but sometimes I go, I don't need compression after all, and I just kill it. Um, and, like, for example, this UAD Cambridge thing where we have that effect, maybe uh, the, the megaphone sound, sort of. It, we may only want that on one verse, and so when we hit the chorus, we turn it off. And then verse. You get the idea, and that could be automated, which we'll cover later. 
Okay, and another brilliant thing that they added, I don't know if it was Cubase 4 or 5, uh, Cubase SX3 did not have this. They added the ability to change... Uh, stretching, stretching, hang on. Uh, early in the morning, still. Um, they added the ability to change plug-in order, and uh, sometimes that's not a huge thing. With what we're doing now, it doesn't make that much difference because it's just EQ. See? Noise. But um, when you start getting distortion plug-ins and uh, de -essers in front of compressors, things like that, becomes a much bigger issue. And so, if we wanted to flip flip flop the order of this, we just hold right here. I'm clicking, and then drag it up, and flip a roo. We can flip back. We can move them anywhere we want. And this is absolutely huge because in the old days, you had to actually remove everything, and uh, save your settings, and presets, and bring them back. And it was terrible. It was just a bad, bad system. But this is great. That's an awesome little little revolution, in my opinion. Okay, that basically covers inserts. Uh, thanks. Bye.